Hi everyone, CG Seb here, and we are back for part two of this guide. Uh, in the first part, we did the modeling, uh, which you can find the link in the description. Uh, so yeah, so if you need the model, you have also the Blender file in the description. So here is the scene. I already made uh, the lightning and everything. So it's ready to be textured. Uh, you can find the, the file in the description, like I said. So first of all, we're gonna split the screen and go to the shader editor. So we can see the nodes of the material. Uh, I'm gonna use Control B to actually make a uh, area of render. Uh, we're gonna start with the bottom. So you select the bottom and then you can select a new material. If you press F, then you can actually choose uh, the two layer shader. Right now we're gonna use only two layers. It will be enough for the bottom part. Right, so move to the left and we're gonna make this metallic, change the color a little bit darker and also the roughness to make it less shiny. Uh, all right, so we have like a material, but it looks a little bit too new to me. So we're gonna add some imperfection into the front menu on the left, on the right, sorry, and the end panel. So you select imperfection and then you click on the rectangle, on the square, and you will find the liquid stain number two. Uh, then you click on it, it will add the node and you can just move the node on the left part. Now we plug the roughness to the roughness and we adjust the minimum roughness and maximum roughness so it's not too uh, intense. We can also play with the scale uh, to, to, to see it, it, the scale will depend on uh, the size of your model. So you play with it and uh, see when you're happy with it. After that, we're gonna select the mix layer and we're gonna press F and choose the mask all edges. We move the nodes and now we have a mask on all the edges but it looks a little bit too uh, too uniform. Like uh, you can actually use the texture input of the whole edge uh, to make it a little bit more random. So we're gonna go to the top, search for the grunges and select grunge number three. You can then plug the results into the texture and now it looks a little bit more random. So that's fine. Um, we're gonna tweak the settings, of course, um, especially uh, the coverage. You can play with the coverage. Uh, if you put the coverage to one, it will be uh, entirely white. And if you put it to zero, it will be entirely black. So you play with it once you're happy with it. You can plug the normal into the normal of the bottom layer. Uh, this will actually affect the, the edges only. All right, so we have the basic. Um, now I'm gonna add more imperfections and I'm gonna choose dented. Dented is actually making some marks into the metal, so it's pretty cool. You can drag it onto the this and it will automatically plug the normal of both uh, the, the, the nodes. Then we're gonna press F and choose Math Lighten. Um, this, this node is actually uh, useful for mixing two masks together. So it's pretty cool. We have the dented and also the edges that are affecting the mask. I usually put the two time uh, setting to zero and then play with the scale to uh, increase or decrease the scale of the dented. Uh, this looks fine. 
um, if you're not really happy about the placement of uh, the dented, you can play with the seed setting and it will actually randomize the, the dent. So it's pretty cool. All right. So let's add some scratches. Once again, you can stack the normal. So you plug the normal of the dented into the normal of scratches and the normal of the scratches into the normal of the layer. Uh, right now, we cannot see them because they're not uh, added to the mask. So we're going to duplicate the lighten um, node. But first of all, we're going to slide them a little bit on the side so we have more space. So duplicate the lighten mask and connect the mask to the B. And now we see that we have the scratches, the dented, and also the edges that are affecting the mask. So that's pretty cool. Uh, once again, you can play with the coverage. Uh, the coverage will show more or less scratches. Um, I'm going to play also a little bit with the scale right here to make them a little bit bigger. And yeah, it's a slight difference. It's not really big, but it adds a little bit of details. So it looks less flat. I'm gonna make this second layer metallic. So the second layer is what is affected by the dented and also the scratches. So we're gonna make it metallic and uh, change a little bit the roughness. So it looks like we scratched the paint of it. So it looks pretty cool. As you can see here, uh, those details are added by the grunge that we added at the beginning. Uh, this is what is affecting the edges. All right, so for the top part, we're gonna actually select the same material and duplicate this material by clicking on this uh, number on the top. So it will copy it to a different instance. Um, we're going to make it actually a little bit darker and those edges are a little bit too big. So go to the all edges mask and reduce the distance. Probably something like that. And don't forget to also play with the coverage, which is a big part of the, the edge, how it will look like. So pretty good. All right, we check how it goes. And actually, you know what? In the here, I'm gonna actually add like there is some dust or a little bit. So we're gonna move this on the side, select the principal BSDF and then to press F and click on mix layer it will actually add a layer in between, which is really uh, cool. Right, so we're gonna press F and this time we're gonna choose the cavity mask. And boom, you see you have uh, the cavities here in orange. Uh, the reason for that is because we didn't change the color here. So we're gonna make something uh, looks like dust or dirt. Uh, brownish color uh, looks pretty good um, maybe you can play with the distance if you see that it looks too big and we're gonna add a texture grunge boom like we did with all edges to add some randomness uh, also like I said play with the coverage if you want more or less uh, dirt in the cavities and you can also play with the seed a little bit. You plug the normals into the normal of the mix layer. And as you can see, the normals are affecting here. Uh, those are very small details. So if you're not doing a closer shot, uh, you don't really need to put a lot of details. Okay, so now that we are done with the top, uh, we're gonna go to the sides. Uh, I'm going to select this, actually select exactly the same material as the top 
and uh, we will adjust it once again. Um, this looks a little bit too damaged to me, like here the edges are too damaged. So I'm going to copy the material by clicking on the number on the top. So we duplicate this material uh, to a different one. So we can modify it without modifying the top one. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to adjust the distance of the edges and probably, yeah, the R sort of cavities because we have too much dirt here. And I'm going to decrease actually the strength. Great. Play with it. Uh, here I have a dent that I don't really like, so I'm going to change the seed of the dented and it will place them somewhere else. All right, looks pretty good for the side. Uh, for the grid, we're going to make something very simple. Add a new material for it. Select the principal BSDF and then in the grunges, I'm going to select grunge number three number five sorry plug the roughness into the roughness make it metallic and make it a little bit darker now uh, you see some small variation uh, you can if you have the add-on which is which comes with uh, blender the node wrangler add-on you can find it in the settings of uh, of uh, blender and you can actually, once it's activated, control shift click on the node to actually view uh, the node. So we're going to control shift click on the crunch and show the result. So we see the black and white map and we can see more what are the settings that are affecting uh, the material. Uh, once we are done, we can control shift click on the principal BSDF and we are back into the normal uh, view. Uh, I'm going to adjust the roughness because it's a little bit too shiny. You can plug the normal into the normals. Uh, right now those are very small details. We're not being able to see them from far so it's not really an issue. For the wires I'm going to just make a simple color uh, because they are behind the grid, we're not going, going to see them. So I'm going to just make them red like this and it, this will be enough. Great. For this part, uh, I want to make something like more uh, like a fabric material. So I'm going to add a new material, select principal BSDF, and we're going to make a two layers shader. Oh, I want to make it red, so make it something like that. Dark red, looks pretty cool. Um, and then uh, for the second layer, we're going to use a mask. But this mask will not be a mask. When you press F and you choose a mask, uh, we will actually go to pattern and choose X pattern, this one. And then we plug the mask into the mask of the mix layer. Uh, right now it looks a little bit weird because you need to play with the scale. Uh, so you play with the scale once you see the, it. Uh, looks pretty cool. We still have some stretching here. And the reason for that is because you need to change the setting. If you have stretching like that, change the setting of the UV object to zero. Great, looks pretty cool. Um, so the white part that you see is actually the second layer in bottom. So if we change the color of the second layer, we're gonna be able uh, to, to change a little bit. So I'm gonna make it a little bit brighter than the other color and I'm gonna make it more rough, like rougher like this. So that's pretty cool. Uh, don't forget to plug the normal into the normal of the two layers and uh, increase the strength. 
if you want to make it a little bit more uh, exaggerated. I'm put it to maximum because we're going to be far away. So those details, we're not going to be able to see them if the strength is not uh, strong enough. To make it more realistic, we're going to go to the normals and choose grain 0, 1. And plug the normal into the normal of the X. And we're going to actually decrease the scale and increase the strength. So it looks a little bit like a synthetic material, like, like fabric. Great, we have a good looking uh, device right now. Uh, the last part will be the wires. Uh, for the wires, I want to make them glowing a little bit. So we're going to select the first wire and then add a new material. And go to the branches. We're going to plug the normal into the normal, not the roughness, like this. And increase the strength, you can then uh, change the emission. We're going to make it a little bit brighter and something in the blue, like purple, blue, something like that. Uh, if you use the result into the emission strength, you can actually uh, make variation into the emission. So that's pretty nice. Um, to increase it, we're going to use a math node. So you can search for it, Control A, search, math node, and then you're going to select multiply. We're going to change this later. So you can play with the color and we are good to go. Don't forget to change also the base color. It will change actually part of the material. So that's pretty cool. All right. Uh, don't forget to increase the multiply, put it to two. So it's actually brighter and change the roughness of the material and the contrast so it's less aggressive on the actually the, the normals. You can play with the value in the scale. Um, it will depend on your on the size of your object. So you can see. All right, and now we have some variation and looks pretty cool because it's not like one color, it, we have some variation, so looks pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to actually select the same material and duplicate it for the second wire. And then we're going to just change the color. We're going to make it red. And great. Once again, for the third one, select material duplicate it and put different color. Nice. Great. So we have lighting wires. All right. So now the last part will be those small uh, details. Um, honestly, you don't really see them uh, in the render. So you can just change the color to black. And if you want a little bit more details, you can go to normals and add a grain node. Plug the normals into the normal and increase the strength. As you can see, we have a little bit details, like it's plastic. Uh, you can apply the material to all of them and uh, this will be done. All right, great. So yeah, we have a pretty cool uh, material here um, and pretty cool device. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this uh, two-part tutorial. If you do, please let me know and I will make more in the future. And see you on the next one.